How's it going? Jasper from Nomo Codes here. In part three of our no code intro course, let's give an overview of the no code space right now with basic terminologies that you should understand about no code software development, the current no code landscape by use cases, the mindset that you should adopt when picking out your tools, and also our recommended tools to start with if you're new to no code. First, very, very important, let's go over the software building fundamentals because no code, despite being a visual way to create software, is still under the hood very much, still follow the same principle of developing a software. By understanding these principles, it will help you extend your knowledge a bit easier down the line. And because all of these principles are transferable from tool to tool, it will become easier for you to try new tools and learn the new tools. All right, without further ado, let's not waste more time. Let's talk about the three main components of uh, making a software application. The front end, the back end, and the APIs. The front end handles um, the user interface and the user experience, essentially everything that your users see and your users would interact with. The back end, which manages the database, the content of your application, and as well as logics and workflows that's running under the hood of your app. And the APIs, application programming interfaces, which technically is part of the backend, but because it is very important to no code, we will separate APIs out from backend database and just talk about it separately. API facilitate communication and data exchange between softwares. And because no code tools are also softwares, with APIs, it allows you to connect different no code tools and services and make them work together and exchange data or run workflows. Basically, you can connect a lot of apps to work holistically as one single service, one single product for your users. And we call these connection integration. If a no-code tool can only create the front end, the UI is what your users will see without the back end or the logics involved. Generally, we will consider that just a website builder instead of an application builder. To make a software application, it requires a full stack development, meaning a combination of front end and back end. Notable tools that offer both the front end builder and also the back end capabilities are Bubble, Softer, and Flutterflow. For the front end, we have covered that already. It's like the website builder and the two common approaches are block UX, which we mentioned in part one, and also drag and drop UX. For the front end, I think it's really just what you see is what you get, and we won't cover too much about the front end builder here. Now let's talk about the back end. The two most important capabilities that an app builder could offer on the back end are a database and a logic slash workflow builder. In terms of database, no code tools usually either offer integration with database services such as Airtable, Google Sheet, Firebase, Xeno, and such with APIs. Or instead of integrating with other database services, you could offer a built in database on top of the front end UI builder. For example, Flutterflow is designed to pair up with Firebase to integrate with Firebase. It does not really offer its native database. Software was released with Airtable integration as the only choice to start with. Uh, as of right now, it doesn't have its own built-in database. You have to use Airtable and Google Sheet. On the other hand, tools like Bubble and Adalo, they can integrate with Airtable, Google Sheet, all those database services that we have mentioned, but they do offer a built-in database right out of the box. So you don't have to integrate with a third party tool. In terms of the logics slash workflow builder, it is an integral part of an app builder to handle what happens when different events happen when using your app. For example, what would happen if these buttons clicked? What would happen if the user is not logged in, but visited a private page. The logic builder is usually the most important factor that determines how complex of an app you can build with the no-code tool. The general rule of thumb is that if you can have more event types that you could use to trigger a workflow, or if you, after triggering the workflow, if you can execute more actions on that workflow, that pretty much means the more powerful app you can make with that tool. However, it usually comes at a cost of a steeper learning curve because it will be a lot of information for users to digest and a lot of moving parts that the user can mess up. A good comparison would be Flutterflow versus Softer. So for Flutterflow, which is known for the steep learning curve, it offers a ton of event types to trigger workflows. For example, on tab, on load, on scroll. 
And once you trigger that workflow, it also offers a lot more ability to execute many actions in a single workflow chain. These are all very powerful, but you know, it's a lot more concept for a beginner to learn and a lot more room for beginners to make mistakes and get stuck. On the other hand, for software, which is known for being really easy to learn and to build, they offer a very controlled set of actions to execute and very limited number of event types to trigger workflows. So you can see that it is a lot more limited. Users don't have much customization options, but for users, it is very easy to understand and very easy to learn because you don't have to worry so much. Everything is in a controlled environment. It's very hard for you to mess up. Despite software not offering, you know, a very complex workflow builder, you do have the ability to leverage API integration with services such as Zapier or Make to run more complex workflow. Now we have covered what a front end is, what a back end is, what APIs are respectively. We can see that no code really is an ecosystem where you pick a tool stack by combining different tools together and make them work together through API integration. Therefore, when starting out with no code, don't fixate on picking a tool that can do it all. You should pick a combination of tools that specializes in solving the problems in their own domain really well. The reason is because when a no code tools are very easy to use, it usually means that they are designed to be very domain specific, meaning that they were designed, at least initially, to tackle a very particular problem space or a particular use case really, really well. This way the tools can provide a lot of features that are essentially templates for users to achieve a very specific goal within a specific domain really fast. It is so important not to be bound by the tools. Tools are here to solve our problems. Your job is to find the right tool to solve the problems. Hence, the first step to pick a tool is actually identifying and defining a problem. The more specific your problem statement is, the better. Because now you can go to the no-code tools website and go through their use cases and success stories and see if they have solved similar problems for other people and to see if their product is even designed for the problem that you are trying to solve. And then you can try the tools that can solve the problems that you're facing and see which one is more intuitive for you. This way you are trying them with a goal in mind, which is immensely helpful for you to evaluate if a, a tool is right for you. Now, because the no-code tools, as we mentioned, are designed to solve domain-specific problems. At Nomo, we have categorized the current no-code landscape with specific use cases that the tools are best used for. For example, web app, website landing page builder, mobile app, database, automation, APIs, etc. You can use our database to search for tools to fit your use case. All of the tools here were handpicked by us. They're either the most well-polished right now, or they have great potential in the years to come. So check them out at nomo.code slash tools. While I believe picking a tool should really depend on your problem space, which I don't know, but to help you narrow down the pool of tools to test out, to, to help you speed up the process, here are some of our recommended starting points to try. For a web app, for an easier building experience, go with Softer. If you want to go more advanced, more customized, more powerful app, go with Bubble or WeWeb. For mobile app, go with Adalo, Glide, if you want a steeper learning curve, but a more powerful one, go with Flutterflow. For internal tools, go with Softer and Stacker for a quicker building experience and learning curve. Go with Retool if you want a really powerful one. For database, go with Airtable and Google Sheet. If you want a more advanced option, go with Firebase. For landing pages, go with Card if you want to build really fast. But if you want more design options, more customization at a steeper learning curve, go with Framer and Webflow. For automation, go with Zapier, make, nan.io. And there you have it. This is the end of our no-code intro series. To learn more about no-code and future-proof yourself with no-code skills, uh, join us at nomo.codes. We have more learning content coming, monthly workshops, and also weekly office hours that you could join where we can help you extend your no-code knowledge and uh, help you build and launch your project with no-code. Until next time.